Suppose we have a sound wave like this. Now suppose we have another sound wave that sounds like the following. Now let's add them up and see what we hear. The final audio we got here looks interesting. It completely depends on the pure sound waves we use to create it. One important thing to note is that changing the loudness of the original wave or the amplitude will completely change how our final wave would look like as shown by the short animation. Now suppose we started off with the final wave. The question is, how do we find the pure waves that we use to make this? Or in other words, how do we go reverse and find the waves that constructed this? Well, the answer lies in a Fourier transform. Now what a Fourier transform does is that it takes a function as an input and puts out another function as an output. Now do not worry about the center part. Just think of it as a given. The main part to understand is that it takes a function as an input and puts out a different function as an output. Now let's analyze these two different functions. As we can see, the left side function has time as an input. So something that changes with time, like a sound wave. Meanwhile, the function on the right has a completely different input. So let's take a closer look at this function. Now this function behaves like any other function we've encountered before. It takes an input, which is represented by the ping dot in this case, and puts out a different output. But for the output of this function, we have to expand to the complex plane. And even with this added complex plane, the function behaves the same. It takes a number as an input and puts out another number as an output. Now let's draw the output of the function on the complex plane. I'm going to be using the orange shot as shown on the screen to represent the output of this arbitrary function. Now as we move the input dot, which is the pink colored one, you can see the output dot moves around in the complex plane. And the specific output of this function isn't much of importance. What is of importance is its magnitude, or how far away it is from zero. That's how Fourier transform graphs are made. For each input on the x-axis, we look at the magnitude of the output and plot it on the y-axis. Now, let's plot the Fourier transform of the original sound wave we started off with. On the left side will be the complex plane, similar to the one we just saw, and to the right will be the Fourier transform graph, where on the y-axis, we're going to plot the magnitude of the output. Also, I'm going to draw a pink dot on the left side to indicate the input, and on top of that, I'm going to create an orange dot that represents the output. Also, I'm going to create an arrow on top of the orange dot to the new graph to show how far the output is from zero. As we move the input dot to the right, we can see the output stays at zero for the most part, except when the input dot is at five, and also another spike when the input dot is at ten. So this right here is a Fourier transform graph. But what does this exactly mean? Well, let's take a look at the graph. There's a spike when the input dot was at 5, and the spike goes up to 2 on the y-axis. And similarly, there's another spike when the input dot was at 10, and the spike also goes up to 2 on the y-axis. So let's use this information to create a wave. 
Let's start off with a simple sine wave like this. Note how changing the number on the outside changes the height of our sine wave. And remember how the spike was 2 units long? So let's make our outside number equal to 2. Now notice what happens when you change the inside number. Making the inside number higher squishes it while making it lower makes it wider. Now remember from the Fourier transform graph how the spike happened when the input dot was at 5? So we're going to change our inside number to be 5. Similarly, now we're going to use information from the other spike to create another wave as follows. Now let's add these two waves together and lo and behold, we get back our original wave. So that's what a Fourier transform does. It takes a function and puts out another function that tells us what sine waves were used to construct this function. That is, it converts a time domain function into a frequency domain function. 